a little moment of oh anyway welcome into class guys it's lovely to have you all in so remember if you are level one you are just coming out of relapse or you're brand new you are sticking with the bare minimum even if you feel like you could do more the idea is you don't you do less okay so i will be demonstrating level one you do a maximum of four of anything uh and please feel free to do one or two yeah you can stop sooner rather than with me if you want to Level two, you are working at kind of six to eight reps of any of these the strengthening, the reconditioning exercises. And level three, you've been coming for a while and you are on 10 maximum, okay? Uh, you will know what level you're on because of the amount of time that you've been coming and how you are right now. So without further ado, I'm just gonna spotlight me. Ross is gonna be the voice and... Um, I am going to be the demonstration model. Model. The, the model. If you're level two, level three, you can now work with a resistance band to add a little bit of extra work to the reconditioning exercises. You can also work with small hand weights. Those hand weights can be just tins of beans. If you are new and you're really, really, really fragile and you're wanting to just check out what's happening, I want you to stay and just watch. Just be part of being here with us, okay? Because sometimes watching is enough, yeah? So don't feel like you need to participate. We will not ever push you to join in if your body is saying no. Welcome, Lillian. Um, I cannot see you, but I know that you are there. Uh, feel free to let yourself be visible because then we can keep an eye on you. But if you're really not happy to do that, that's okay. All right, my little friends, I'm gonna move to my mat now. Hopefully the sunshine is nice where you are too. Ross and I are down on the South Coast, uh, Brighton. And it's really nice down here. If I was a sea swimmer, I'd be going, it's still a bit cold. Um, so I'm not. <laughs> okay, we're gonna come down onto our mats. Level one is we just need some kind of cushion at some point for a leg strengthening exercise that we do just something to stuff under your knee. So make sure you've got that. And for yoga, we're gonna need some kind of belt and that might just be a scarf or a yoga belt if you have one, or just a long t-shirt or one of those resistance bands or something, okay? So we've said all of our kind of pre-check, check-in. If you've been level two or level three for a while and you're having a little bit of a lower energy day, I want you to really pare it down. Okay, so really check in with how you are today rather than how you were yesterday or even last week. It is a kind of day-to-day -day thing, this process, so you have to be honest with yourself. Are we good to go? Give me a little thumbs up, everyone that's joining in. We're good to go. Okay. Russ, shock me. What are we starting with? So we're going for burpees this morning, people now. <laughs> Don't worry. Okay, we're going to go with bridge, which is one of my all-time favourites. Uh, this one is a great one for the glutes, the hamstrings, the lower back, a little bit of core as well. So we are going to be pushing those hips up off the mat, trying to breathe it out as we do so. Now, you may want to use a resistance band here. If you're level two or three, you can use a band just above the kneecaps, lower part of the thigh, just to make it a little bit tougher. And we can do a little tap out to the side. So level one, you're not going to worry about that. You're just going to be pushing those hips up as you breathe it out and breathing in as we lower those hips back down again. So I'm on my third bridge, level one is. If you're already thinking this is quite a strong exercise, I want you to stop, okay? And when you stop, you let your legs rest down completely flat. I'm going to do one more. So if you're level one and you've been coming for the last week or so and you're fine, it doesn't cause relapse, then you, you can go for four. I would encourage that. But again, it is important for you to test and test for a couple of weeks before you start doing more, okay? I'm gonna let my legs come down now so that I'm in total relaxation. I'm looking at Liz out in the sunshine and I have sunshine envy. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a lovely that. garden. 
<laughs> yeah. So the level two, the level three, you carry on doing your little bit of extra stuff and we rest. Good. Don't forget when you're resting, you must breathe. Be conscious of how you're breathing. Lengthen that inhale, lengthen the exhale. Okay, so next one we're going to do is going to be focusing on upper body. We're going to give those legs a rest. We're going to go with our fly and press. So it's two exercises in one this. If you're level one, you can just purely use the weight of your own arms. So you're just going to make a fist and we use the weight of your own arms as the resistance. If you're level two or three, you can, of course, use some weights. Make sure that they're not too heavy. Tin of beans, one kilo weights, two max, I would say. And we're going to go wide with those arms to begin with, bringing them in, palms together, turning those hands, coming down nice and slow, always in line with the chest, and back up again as you breathe it out. You want to breathe out as that weight moves away from your body. I've got my legs bent. It's a little bit easier for the lower back. So do bend your legs if you can. I would. I'd recommend that for everyone. Whatever level you are, it is going to be nicer on your back if you've got your legs bent here. Now, the arms get more tired more quickly than the legs. So if already my level one is particularly, you're thinking, oh, my arms are shaking, just stop. You don't need to do four of these. You can do one or two. They're quite a strong exercise. They are. They're two for one as well, this one. So. <laughs> two for one. <laughs> so I've done four and I'm now going to let my arms and my legs rest back down on the mat. Great. So if you're resting, it should be like Susie, legs straight now. Just relaxed, take some deep breaths. readying ourselves for the next exercise so we are going to work again on the lower body now we're we'll trying to mix these up guys so we give you some time to rest upper body or lower body so we're going to go with uh legs for the next one which is going to be leg lift which is really working the quadriceps or the front of the thigh so if you're level one really good idea i think to have a cushion under your knee susie's got a bolster which is perfect you can use cushions here pillows whatever whatever you have to hand roll that mat will work or blanket and you can put that under the knee which is going to be lifting that heel up off the floor and we want to do a little point and flex so it doesn't matter what level you're here you're here one two or three you can still try this point and flex level one we stay completely lying down and we're just going to do Maximum one or two each side, total of four. If you want to do one more because you've been coming for a couple of weeks, then that's fine. Level two, level three, remember you can be up on your elbows, which engages your core a little bit more, and you lift that leg to a kind of 45 degree. And then you take your flex and point, all right? It's not about height, so you don't worry about trying to get the leg all the way up to the nose. Level one is you've probably finished by now, so let those legs rest and come back down just to focus on your breath. <laughs> Some nice point and flexing going on here. A great array of socks as well. Lots of people in bare feet today with that warmer weather. <laughs> okay, have we done both sides with that? Well, I have. I was alternating. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> Means it's time for half bug then. So again, if you're level two or three, you can use weights for this one. Uh, you've got a straight arm, so make sure that the weights aren't too heavy. Level one. Yeah. Level one, we're going to have our legs bent and our arms above our head and we bring one knee up. We bring the hands to the knee and we lower it back down. So that's level one. You can do two 
either side or three either side, whatever feels right, maximum of four. Level two, level three. Level two, bring from straight leg position a bent knee in, and you can add a little bit of hand weight in if that's okay. Level three, you can bring a straight leg up. And again, adding that really light hand weight, don't go crazy. But level one is we're doing this bent legged and we're just bringing our hands to the knee. The knee lifts and we release. Whatever feels right numbers wise, tune in. But when you're done, you're done. Straighten back down into that deep rest. Legs come down. Hands on the abdomen, that can feel quite nice if you're thinking about how to breathe. And I want the breath to come right down into the abdomen and lift the tummy muscles up a little bit. Good. Great, last couple from some of you here. The next one we're gonna do is, again, mostly for legs, we're gonna go with a uh, clamshell. <laughs> Yay. Woohoo. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm rolling onto my side. I'm going to give myself a pillow. Let's just make this as bearable as we can. <laughs> I've got my legs bent and this, uh, this exercise is perfectly named because it's like the opening of a shell. You keep the hinge which is the feet touching and you lower the knee. So you're gonna do two, maximum three, if you're crazy, four, level one is each side. It is quite a tough exercise. You might just wanna do one. Level two, level three, you can put in between each of those clamshells, a little Jane Fonda leg straighten, okay? If my level two, level three, you've got your resistance band on, it goes just above the knee and it does make it quite a lot harder. So you might just wanna do two or three each side with the resistance band. Remember, we are gently reconditioning our bodies. We're not going all out like we would have done in the gym a year or so ago. So change how you work with yourself. Less is more. Once you've done one side, just come into that total rest position. And again, come back to the breath. When you're ready to move to your second side, the easiest thing to do for you guys is just to roll over the back of your body. If you quite like facing front or facing the screen, then do what I'm gonna do, which is spin yourself all the way around. But you don't need to look, you know what you're up to. Okay. Kate's dog helping her with this one. <laughs> Kate's dog's always very helpful. <laughs> As is Roz's dog. The dogs that like to get involved, I like. So whatever you do on one side, have a go at doing it on the other, but you might find like I do that one side is much harder. So I'm actually just gonna do one more on this side. It's really tough and let it go. Caroline's dog is with her too. <laughs> Definitely helping. All the dogs are in, <laughs> apart from mine. She would not be helpful. <laughs> Once you're done, level one, you should be down in rest. Level two, you should be coming down to stillness. Level three, you might have one more. I think everyone is good to go. Okay, what's next? Why don't we go with our uh... Face down one next for the back. Oh yeah. The lotus. The locusts. Locusts, not lotus. That's a different move completely. <laughs> <laughs> you should invent the lotus, whatever that is, we'll invent it, okay? <laughs> Very yogi. Unless you're thinking about the car. 
Okay, so this one is for strengthening up the back muscles, which is always a good thing. Level one, you're going to keep your hands in line with your face. And we're going to lift the chest up, trying to use the back muscles as much as possible, but you can use the hands a bit. You turn and let one ear come down. And then I'm going to lift up again and turn and let the other ear come down. So if you want to do that one or two more times, great. Level two, you lift your hands up when you're turning. Level three, your hands are up and your legs are up when you're turning the head, okay? So quite clear and distinct levels. Yeah, that's a big difference. Even from level two to level three, you're really gonna feel that difference. Lifting those feet up is not easy. No. So just judge it in terms of how many reps you wanna do, guys. It might not be your usual eight or 10 here. It might be more like three or four. Once you're done, just allow a stillness. You can stay lying on your front unless you hate lying on your front, in which case get comfortable however you choose. How are we doing? Good. Everyone's, Everyone's doing great. Last ones from some of you. Uh, we're going to go with our quadrology next, which is a really good one for biceps, triceps, shoulders. So this is an upright sitting one. You're going to need something to sit on, like a cushion, quite a dense cushion, because I'm going to ask you to kneel if that's bearable for you. So if already level one is you're thinking, oh, I'm quite tired now, you can just stay lying down, okay? You don't need to join. We're gonna to come to the yoga bit in a little while and you can just pick us up at that point. If you're happy to carry on, and I know everyone's at a different stage, so you have to make the decision that's right for you. If you're at level two, level three, you might be working with light hand weights here, tins of beans, remember? Because there's four exercises, four lifts involved in this little sequence. So. You might just work once through if you're level one, level two, level three, maybe two or three times, maybe four times, whatever feels right. So this has to be comfortable. So make sure you are comfy kneeling. And I'm gonna lift up in front of me. I've got clenched fists, level one, you're with me. There's nothing in our hands. I'm gonna lower down. Then I'm gonna draw the elbows out behind me and pull the hands up to the armpits, lower down. Push the hands back, lower down, pull those hands up, turn and push. Lower down and stop. Now, level one, you might think I'm good, I'm done, stop. Even if you don't feel tired, stopping is probably a good idea. But if you're coming and you've been coming for a couple of weeks or so and it's fine, let's go again, up and down up and down, behind and down, lift and push, and all the way down. So level one, whilst we wait for the twos and the threes to do their thing, we can come into child's pose. If that's comfortable for you, and just let the body rest. Breathing slowly in and out. How's everyone getting on? Really good. Nice array of weights. <laughs> <laughs> It is inspiring to see so many people moving up the levels now. Well done. Okay, let's make this the last one. Great, Rachel. <laughs> A 
Okay. Why don't we go for donkey kicks next? So if you've got a resistance band, so level two, level three, get your resistance bands for this one. If you want, it is optional, of course. It would make it a lot tougher. So because this is a hands and knees exercise, this can be quite tiring if you're new. You might just want to do one and lower, one and lower, and then come back down onto your hands and knees. If you're already thinking, I might have done too much today, if you're new, then you don't need to join us at all and you can rest in child's pose or indeed just lie down. But if you are coming with us, donkey kick is about strengthening the muscles in the bottom, the back of the thigh. If you're level two, remember you're gonna bring that knee up into a little bit of a crunch too. It's a strong piece of work for the back of thigh and for the muscles in the bottom. So. Don't be surprised if you feel a little achy as you lower the leg. So I'm just gonna do two each side. And then I'm gonna also come down into rest. It is important that your resting position of choice is actually restful for you. So actually, I'm kind of done with being in child's pose. I'm gonna lie on my side. And once you're resting, really allow yourself to kind of sink down into the floor. How are we doing? All oh, good. Some people are still going. Charlie Tune on it today, Rachel on it today. <laughs> okay, let's make that the last one, guys. We're going to do our last exercise, which is going to be, uh, let's go for opposition stretch. So if you're level two, level three, remember you can put in a half press up here, or if you're level three, you can try taking that nose all the way down to the mat, if it feels okay. Level one, we're just going to concentrate on those opposite limbs. So right arm, left leg, and vice versa. Stretching those out away from the body. Making sure you have got something soft under the knees here if you need it. You're working on a stable but soft surface. So looking after those knees and wrists. The same thing applies to the last exercise as with this one. If you're tired already, and this is a whole body exercise, you don't need to join it. You don't need to do this one at all, or you can just do one each side. And then again, come down to rest. There is no pressure. You have to work within your own body's comfort level. And sometimes that baseline takes us quite a lot of adjusting to find. Sometimes it's just enough to get yourself organized enough to show up for class. Joining in is like another level. So if the fact that you're here and you're resting is perfect, it's enough. We know how much effort is involved in even just getting yourself logged into class. If you're counting your spoons of energy, that's going to definitely use up a spoon, right? For sure. You know that one more recently than me now, don't you, Ross? Yeah, I do. I do indeed. How important those spoons are. <laughs> Excellent. All right, last one, guys. You're still going. Make this the last rep. And rest. Good. Okay. Well done. Thank you, Ross. Ross is going to join us now on his mat and I'm going to do a little bit of yoga with us in relaxation. So we're actually going to stay down on our backs. I'm just going to slide my bolster out the way for a moment. I've got my belt near me so that I can take a hold of it at some point. 
but I want us to lie down on our backs with our legs bent. And we're gonna interlock our hands behind our neck and just push those elbows up and then out wide a little bit. So let the neck lengthen. And I'm gently pressing into the back of the neck with my interlocked fingers. I'm breathing slowly in, slowly out. Now, this is a vagus nerve kind of retoning exercise. So we're actually going to look, keeping the head still, we're going to lift the eyes and look up in the direction of that right elbow. And just hold it here. It's a little bit uncomfortable on the eyes to hold them in that position, but if you can stay, if you need to come in and out, that's fine. It's okay to blink. Okay, bring the eyes back to center. Let's come up the, uh, with the eyes on the other side, the left. So remember those elbows out. We try to keep the head still and it's just the eyes that look up. Breathing slowly. and bring yourself back to center. Okay, I'm going to stretch the arms now along the floor above the head. Just stretch them away a little bit. And then let's release and bring the arms back down to the side of the body. Okay, I'm going to take my hand above my head and pull the right ear down towards the right shoulder and just extend my left arm out to the side of it. So I'm doing a stretch that we often do sitting upright, the side neck lengthening stretch, but I'm doing it totally supported by the floor. So we're just staying here, lengthening out. If you're pulling the right ear to the right shoulder, it's the left side of the neck that you're stretching. I'm sure you can all feel that. Breathing slowly in and slowly out. And gently release the head, bring it back to center. Let's go the other side. I'm taking the hand over. And I'm gonna draw the left ear down. And again, just take that right arm out wide until you feel a bit of a stretch coming down the neck. Often one side is tighter, so don't be surprised. Try and keep the chin and the face pointing up a little bit so we're not turning the face in towards the shoulder. Okay, bring it back to center. Good. Again, I'm gonna take those arms along the floor above the head. Let's take a slow breath in, open the chest. Exhale, bring it all the way back. Let those arms rest down by the side of the body. So for many of us, the breathing becomes shallow and the chest is tight, the shoulders will tighten up. And all of that will affect our ability to breathe fully down into the abdomen. So I'm just going to keep repeating that stretch, even if it's quite uncomfortable. I don't want you to hold it if it is, but just easing the shoulders out. Let's bring the soles of the feet together and allow those knees to drop wide. Just opening through the hip, opening out through the groin, the inner thigh. Again, if this feels too strong or uncomfortable, you don't need to hold it, or you could put some cushion or support underneath the legs. Whatever feels okay for you, and it is important that you're working what's right for your body. Once again, with the legs here, if you can, but bring them back if they've already had enough. I'm gonna take those arms along the floor above my head, breathing in. And breathing out, bring the arms back, bend them as you do, make it a bit easier. Now I'm bringing one knee back and then the other knee back. 
from here, let's just take a pause. I've got one hand on the lower abdomen, one hand on the lower ribs, and I'm breathing slowly. But I'm trying to breathe down into the abdomen, which means you're going to need to breathe in longer than you would normally. So breathing in, breathing in, breathing in, breathing in, and then gently breathing out. And as you make that inhale longer, so you're gonna then have to make the exhale a bit longer, which is exactly what we're headed for. Lengthening the breath. And when we lengthen the breath, we work to reset the autonomic nervous system and take us out of that hyper-stress response state into a calmer state. Okay, I want you to try and keep breathing like that. And we're gonna take those arms out wide. I'm gonna drop both knees over to the right. Just drop them over, a little twist through the spine. Now try and keep that slow breath in, slow breath out. I'm gonna bring one knee back and then the other. Just reset the spine. Take a moment, let's rest here. And let's go the other way. One knee over, the other knee goes. Gently twisting through the spine. Get the breath down into the abdomen. For sure it's easy to forget. There's a lot happening in the body. And bring one leg back. Bring the other leg back. Again, let's just let those legs rest against each other. Take a moment of stillness. That's it. I'm gonna bring the right knee in, give it a hug, flatten down the left leg. So all of these movements are just about gently easing the body, soothing the body. We're not here to promote your flexibility. We're just kind of loosening the knots. Think of it like that. I have flattened down the other leg. So I've got one knee drawn in and one leg is straight down. That's it. I'm gonna take that bent knee out wide, just pull it out to the side a little bit. Bring it back to center. And let's pull it across the body. Again, a little bit of a twist. Inhale and exhale as you move over with that knee. So just a small movement. I've still got my left hand on that right knee, just easing over. You'll feel this in your bum. If it's too strong, just back off a little bit. You're in charge of how much you do. That's it. Bring it back to center. Now I'm gonna take the belt that is handily right next to me and place it around the ball of that right foot and just stretch that leg up. So this can often feel really good if you've not had a stretch for a while. It's important that you don't try too hard. Don't go crazy. Let's draw those toes down towards the face a tiny bit. And that's probably enough on that side. Let's let the leg go. So I'm going to take the belt off, move it out the way and lie that leg down on the mat. And I want you to kind of feel into the leg. Just let it relax, let it be heavy, let it sink down. Slow inhale, slow exhale. All the time, just reassuring the body, it's okay, it's all right. We're not gonna push ourselves. We don't need to create a stress response. Keep that breath nice and slow. So 
So let's do the same thing on the second side. I'm going to bring the left knee up, draw it in. Just stretch out the lower back, bend that knee, hug it in. Slow inhale, slow exhale. Great. Just the left hand on the left knee. I'm going to move it out wide to the side. Open it out. Just a small movement. Bring it back to center. Change hands on that knee. And then just pull the knee gently over, a little bit of a twist. Now send the breath once again right down into the abdomen. Create a bit of space down there. That's it, good. And bring it back to center. I'm going to pick up the belt. If it feels okay, put the belt around the foot and let's stretch it up. If it doesn't feel okay, come right down. All of this is optional. I have got two straight legs at this point. <laughs> just draw those toes down towards the face a little bit just to get that calf stretched. Let's breathe in here. And now enough, leg comes down lengthens away and we lie relaxed on the mat. Let's come back to the breath. One hand on the lower abdomen, one hand on those lower ribs. So even if the heart rates come up a little bit, there's a sense of panic because you've done some movement, let's just settle. Tell yourself it's okay. Offer yourself reassurance the way you would if you were reassuring a very young child. Jaw relaxed, tongue soft, forehead soft. Okay, so we're going to move into the relaxation part now. So get comfortable, get warm, put a blanket or a throw over you, put a pillow under the knees if you like, maybe a folded blanket under the heads if that works for you. If you're on bed or in bed, just get the cover over you, get yourself comfy. Some of you I know have a little eye bag which helps to calm the mind if the mind is very busy. And if you want to put something like that over your eyes, then do. Great. So we're going to start with the visualization of a time from your past when you felt well, content, comfortable, happy, healthy. Just go back in your memory to a time when you felt like that. It might be the same memory that you revisit each time we do this exercise. It might be a different one. If you haven't got something specific, it might just be a combination of those sensations that you're able to just remember. Ideally, the memory, if you're vis visiting one, is out in nature somewhere. And I just want you to breathe in the sensations. Notice in your memory, the color around you, the brightness, how much light there is, what you can hear, 
if there is any smell, maybe you're somewhere like a forest or the beach or by a pool and there's particular sensations and smells and aromas around you. I want you to notice how your limbs feel, what the temperature of the air is on your skin. How it feels to feel like this. What impact does that have on the body? It might make you smile a little bit as, you memory, as your memory becomes brighter and clearer. And just kind of reawaken the cells in the body that remember feeling like that. And breathe it in like you're absorbing that memory. And as you breathe out, you're allowing the body to sink down into a wonderful state of rest. The jaw is relaxed. The tongue is soft in the mouth. The forehead is soft. The back of the head sinks down. The backs of the shoulders heavy and relaxed. The arms, wherever they are, either hands resting on you or the arms by the side. The arms are comfortable, relaxed and released. Same for the lower back, sinks down into the floor. The abdomen soft. The chest having just been a little loosened with some of the movement, maybe a little freer now, the movement moving more easily with the ribcage up and down. The abdomen lifts and falls. The back of the hips heavy, the back of the thigh heavy, the front thigh soft and relaxed. Above the knee, below the knee, the front and back of the knee. Soft, heavy and relaxed. The shin and the calf relaxed and released. The back of the heel, heavy, top of foot, sole of foot, relaxed and released, and those toes, soft and relaxed. The mind slower, calmer. The breath slower and calmer, and a little deeper. And by deeper, I mean the breath in is just a little more lengthened. The breath out is just a little more lengthened. And that creates a wonderfully calm state in the body and in the mind for us to shift into that rest, digest and repair state. And just stay here, enjoying the feeling that you've created. You're safe, comfortable, relaxed, warm. And I'm going to invite you to stay here for as long as you can comfortably. 
enjoying the rest. And I'm gonna say goodbye to you, but leave you there. Have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll see you next time. Take care.